Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here from Mr. Building and welcome to my kitchen. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is our pantry. And uh, well, it's not very big. It's not very functional because it's super deep that you can't really get to. So in today's video, we're gonna take this, well, boring pantry and turn it into that. So without wasting any time, let me show how I built it and let's get into the video. Let's go. But before we get started, let's talk about sponsors today's video is squarespace.com. From website designs, online stores, to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to help build your online presence and help you run your business successfully. Now, some of my favorite features include built-in mobile website. Every website design automatically includes a unique mobile experience layout that matches the overall feel of your website. And if that's not something you like, you can simply disable it and go old school. With e-commerce templates, inventory management, simple and secure payment processing and payment, whatever you are selling, Squarespace has the merchandising tools to make your products look their best online. So be sure to go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Mr. Billet to get 10% off your first order on a website or domain. And in the meantime, let's get back to build. Let's go. So the issues with our current pantry setup is that is it's not very wide, but it is deep enough to actually store plenty of stuff. The issue is it's not functional space. So if you actually sometimes forget what you have because it's stacked behind things after things. I wanted to have like a nice all around encompassing like a wood, natural wood look. And then I want these shelves to be able to be pulled out. I want to have a little coffee section, put an outlet in there for the tea kettle. A lot of people always tell me, isn't your door upside down? It is, it 100% is. Uh, the door broke off here and I was between a bunch of projects, didn't have time, did not have time. So I decided to flip it until a situation like today where I'm gonna build one. I wanna make it something abstract, something a little bit fancy, uh, maybe a little uh, centerpiece, uh, natural wood, maybe a staggered pattern, I don't know. We'll see what the creativity comes to us. But in the meantime, let's take a run to the hardware store. All right, I don't know how this happens to me, but I swear it happens all the time. It's gonna pour any second. In fact, it's gonna storm all day. I have three sheets of three quarter inch maple plywood, three sheets. Um, and uh, that's like $178 after tax. <laughs> and if it rains, that stuff gets ruined. It like delaminates and whoo. <laughs> Oh, I told you, ah, it's getting here. I've been, literally been home for five minutes. This could have been us. Oh, this could have been us, friends. I'm gonna build a cabinet that is out of maple plywood, uh, both the sides and the back. The entire sucker is gonna slide into that small pantry space. So we're gonna break it down on our track saw, and then I'm gonna assemble everything with pocket holes, and then as it's assembled and making sure, the most important part, everything is square, because that's if it's out of square, man, our life is gonna suck. And then I'm gonna slide it into that space. Never done something like that. So let's get to work, let's go. All right, we got these suckers cut. This is huge. So we're gonna adjust this or assemble this via pocket holes. If in the past you guys have seen me use a Craig Foreman, I can't get these big boards on there without breaking my back. So we're gonna do the old fashioned way. That's a little pricey. This is very inexpensive. It's about 20 bucks. It's a Craig Mini. And all it is is you set your dial to three quarter inch, that's the material that we're working with. And then you take your clamp, clamp it like so in place. You're gonna take your drill bit that comes with it drive that in place and now boom we have a pocket hole we're gonna use our inch and a quarter screws and secure it in place I get a bunch of messages saying pocket holes or wood glue both you got to use both so let's get to uh, putting this thing together we have some glue squeezing out and the best solution I found is taking a damp rag not too wet and then making sure you get it all out there so don't forget that <laughs> I'm gonna go on record and say somewhere along my building career while shooting videos for YouTube, I'm gonna break my back on camera. 
I can't be lifting stuff like this like that anymore. It's heavy. I'm gonna have to help somebody help me bring it. Now, before we can install it, we need to do the favorite part of any home makeover is demo day. Let's make a blank canvas. That's the best part. Let's go. And just like that, we got the shelves out. Now here's a demoing trick. If you're gonna wear safety glasses, make sure you wear them on the back of your head so they don't do what they're supposed to do. I completely forgot to wear them. Could have really hurt my eyes, so be safe. Use a stiff putty brush or knife, put it underneath, and then use the leverage of your hammer or your pry bar to push it away so it distributes the actual pressure of the pry bar. And just like that, no drywall work needed to be done. I need to find the nearest cable for power. Do you guys mind if I build something? Is that cool? Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope I'm not interfering with them. I need to find the nearest power cable. How lucky are we? Check this out. Folks, we got ourselves a power cable. <laughs> How lucky. All right, so at this point, we're gonna do the electrical before we start putting the cabinet in. In order to make it a safe connection, we need to create a junction box. You wanna put something there, that way the next owner that comes in before they start cutting into the wall, they know that there's some kind of electrical box that's there. We're gonna put it on the inside of this wall here. We're gonna throw a junction box there. We're gonna connect the cable. I got one of these little Milwaukee's, they're voltage detectors, and they're really neat, because once you touch it, it starts beeping telling you the wire's hot. All right, folks, uh, made a mistake. Can't just usually cut a cable right in the middle and then split it. Reason why is you can't put a junction box. Uh, you can't connect them. To, there's not enough slack to bring it in. So I'm gonna go on the other side of the wall, put in the new long cable with plenty of snack, slack. That way it'll be done the right way. Learn from my mistake, but uh, no harm, no foul. We just learned something new. And uh, let me get that fixed and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Thanks. Okay, so here's what we got going on here. A lot has happened mostly because I turned the camera off to figure things out. Embracing that sweat, part of the courage. Ripped out the drywall, put a junction box there, placed it on the other side of this wall. Extended it right here. When you guys do electrical, I use these little connector extenders so much better than those twisty ones. I don't know the exact names for it. All the electrical guys are gonna kill me. Because the back of our cabinet is wood, you cannot have an exposed gap before the receptacle or whatnot. You have to do one of two routes. One is these basically box extenders. What it does is creates a covering for the electrical part between the wood. What I did is I just took a three quarter inch piece of maple, laid it against my stud, and then use that as a spacer before securing this electrical box. I can go bring the cabinet in and fingers crossed nothing goes wrong. <laughs> but if it does, we'll just take more blood pressure medicine. All right, for the shelves, we're gonna do only two of them. We're gonna cut out the inside of it and then edge band veneer it, throw some pocket holes on the back and then secure these in place. Uh, so this, uh, Bandsaw is not wide enough to make the cut that I need. Uh, <laughs> the blade popped off. I guess I will be using a jigsaw. See, I'm, I'm one of you guys. Let's do jigsaw. All right, so for edge banding veneer, very easy. See, this is iron on stuff. Make sure you guys get that kind of stuff. Paid 16 bucks for this and it's like 50 feet. Get your iron super hot, turn the steam off. In fact, I would just get the water out of it. Start out with the edge, hold it on there for, I don't know, five seconds or so. Grab a scrap piece of wood and start pressing on the wood glue onto the end grain plywood edges. Once that's done, now that's not going anywhere, we can slot working this way out. Nice, slow pace, the hotter, the better. And then just keep pressing on. All right, and once you got it on and you're kind of flicking it on the sides here, we, you're kind of scraping on the sides to see if there's any change in pitch. That'll kind of tell you if some part's not connected. Then you'll take a razor blade, cut off this excess, run your blade along it. Be careful not to cut your existing veneer on your plywood. Once you get it off, and yes, it's still sharp, so then the trick is you get 120 grit sandpaper with a little block, and you start working this little edge with the surface to create a nice flush piece that actually looks like solid one piece wood.
That's, I think that's how the Egyptians moved the pyramids. They just put a drop cloth down and start just pulling it. I don't have a dolly. I need to get a dolly. And also, what's the over-under that this thing fits from the get-go? Because I, I wanted to make it perfect. Let me know in the description below. Okay, it's touching it like a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch drywall. I'm going to remove that drywall. All right, I removed the upper piece of drywall here and this lower piece of drywall. We're going in. It's in. Oh man, it's in. All right, so now that we got our cabinet in, we need to do three drawers that are gonna sit below the countertop here. So I'm gonna keep them nice and short. It'll give us all the room. That way you don't have to dig too far into it. And on top of it, these drawers are gonna be pretty big. And the drawer slides, they have a rating for 100 pounds. And yes, it's not gonna be 100. I just don't wanna push the weight limit. So my drawers are only gonna be 24 inches deep. It's gonna leave a couple inches in the back because I have an outlet. I'm gonna plug things in and I don't want anything banging against it. All right, so I got my drawers all cut up. These are the sides, five inches tall. This is the bottom. I'm actually doing the full three quarter inch for the bottom. I don't want it to ever sag. They're not gonna have drawer face frames or anything like that. Uh, I'm thinking about making a cut out here. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I do that cut? I think it'll be decorative enough. It'll, plus it'll match the opening. Yeah, I will. I'm gonna make that cut. All right, this is one of my favorite jigs, mostly because it keeps it so simple. It has a magnet right here. Place it right here, this creates a nice 90 degree angle, and then from that point on, you can start securing it. So 15 bucks or so, maybe less, but I've installed countless drawers with it. Now, I'll be 100% transparent with you guys. Let me show you the situation that happened with the drawers. Excuse the noise. These are drawers. And you're thinking, wait, why are the drawers there if they're already installed? These are my first batch of drawers. So, I measured for these drawers on the outside here instead of the inside because there's nothing securing it here. There's quite a bit of flex. I made the last drawers a quarter inch too wide. So, I had to redo them. What are the wise? Measure from the back or if you have a reinforcement piece here, which I will, you'll be safe then. So live and learn. What's nice is I got a bunch of these scrap pieces from the cut I'm gonna use to create a bracket for our countertop granite to sit on. Now this is the last piece that I'm adding before we start working on the granite. This is more from keeping the cabinets from flying open because there's a little flex there. So we need a little reinforcing pieces. They do this with cabinets. That's what I've noticed. They'll, they'll just kind of secure it to keep the two ends from splitting. Now let's go get our granite cut. Let's go. All right, so over here I have a beautiful piece of quartz. I don't know enough about it. I know that I worked for about a year when I first married my wife for my father who owns a granite company. So I got a few little tricks from him. I used a little scrap piece of one by five, clamped it down to work as a guide with my grinder and a diamond blade. And we're gonna start just following it along the line, making nice slow passes. Don't try to cut it all at once. In fact, if you can do like three eighths at a time, fantastic. Let's start cutting, let's go. Look at this cut. That is a clean cut, sir. All right, so really happy with how everything came out. I was nervous about it. Now, now we gotta polish this, and it's a three-step polishing pad. It comes on a little wheel. You set your, oh, that's kind of a cool effect, huh? Ooh. You set the uh, angle grinder to like 1,500, 2,000 RPMs, and then you kind of take your time going through the polishing pads, kind of like sanding, I guess, and then uh, give it a nice, small little round over. So let's see how this turns out. My first time, absolutely first time polishing. Surprisingly a lot easier than I thought it would be. Came out great, let's go throw it on top and uh, see how it looks. Oh, 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 look how good it looks. It's amazing what happens once the countertop goes on and you're like, oh, I see what you're doing here. The blue tape, by the way, that's just to make sure it doesn't scratch around as we're pushing it in. Typically, you have to have door jams. And so because we have the space here, we're gonna remove this drywall here and we're gonna use a pine. That's where the door guy recommended for me to use. I found this one by three. It's a pine. I'm gonna start lining around the edges. I'm gonna make sure it's square, secured in place. Let's get to work. 
All right, so installing door jams, the floor is my first reference. A good handy tool is to use a nice long square like this. I need to bring this down uh, about an eighth there. So what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use these little shims, put it right where the screw would go, drive it through in place. All right, so all four corners are squared off. Got my shims in place. I'm just gonna use like a flesh saw to cut it nice and clean. And then we're gonna put our trim boards on and then we can start on the door. So the last thing that we need to get ready and built on this pantry to finish it is the door. My budget alternative plus a technique that I wanna experiment with includes just using a sheet of maple plywood. It's all in my head. I've never tried it before. We're gonna give it a go. Let me show you what I mean. Let's get started. All right, so this will be interesting. So I've made uh, lines across this entire plane and then on each line, I'm gonna take my track saw and cut all the way through, stopping where these borders are. To give that cool retro look, never done this. So, uh, looks kind of bland, but you know I got something up my sleeve. I figured that we cut up some inch and a half strips plywood and then secure it like a frame that'll also strengthen the door from bending i literally came up with this idea last minute i'm really excited about it. so i'm gonna flip this thing over create some pocket holes and that way i could secure this on the sides and then put our bracket that will be our hinge that's gonna be swinging open so pretty excited i was really worried about finding a solution but i'm pretty excited about this Thanks so much for sticking around and finishing this video. Uh, it means the world to me, guys. This project is a labor of love. There's a lot of frustration that happened along the way. A lot of things that I didn't consider, like the fact that though the cabinet might be square, uh, the framing might not, based off of the previous door that was here, that they just kind of shimmed it out. So a lot of things came with it. A lot of you always ask me how I know how to build, where did I get my resources, and to be completely honest with you, everything is trial and error. I'm just not afraid to make these mistakes. I made mistakes and I learned from them, and I'm gonna take it on to my next project and be that much more educated and skilled for the next one. So we're gonna embrace to do the difficult things that are out there in life. They're gonna make us a better person. So courage and sweat, that's what we live by. We need the courage to, well, to rip out our pantry, and we need the sweat to get through those frustrating moments, to persevere through all that hard work and come out of it being better versions of ourselves and as builders. Be sure to like, comment, and share this video with your friends. I will place links down in the description of this video of the tools that I used on this project, as well as my social media links. You guys can connect with me there, including the merch section that helps support this channel and my Patreon page where I will be putting out videos, sharing some of the things that I would have done differently on every project. So if that is something that you guys like, be sure to check me out there. In the meantime, tune out this week. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya.